Yeah, just taking it one day at a time right now, just trying to figure out uh, what's going on while also uh, getting myself ready to play. Obviously, um, you, know, you try to prepare as a starter every week, but you know, a week like this week, it's it's a little, a little more intense and just trying to make sure on top of everything. With the contract being up at the end of the year, I know you're probably not thinking about that, but it's an opportunity to go back out and put some good work on film. Yeah, I just want to go out and, and if I have the opportunity, play well and, uh, and try to get a win. You feel like your ankle is... I don't know if 100% is fair, but I mean, you feel pretty healthy at this point, given the time off? Yeah, I finally feel over the hump. You know, it took a while, uh, way longer than I thought I was going to. But um, but at this point, yeah, I feel like I got over the hump and, and feeling good. It's been like these, these past several weeks, Ryan. I'm sure it's tough for you, a veteran, kind of having to play a number two role. How, how, how have you dealt with that and, and kind of relationship with your team? So? Yeah, it's been a tough couple of weeks, obviously. Uh, a lot of changes and in, in settling into a, a new role. But, you know, I've tried to... Uh, be an asset to the team, uh, be an asset to Will, and, and help him out as much as I could, and uh, and Tim with the game plan and anything I've seen. So uh, definitely a different role, but uh, you know, tried to still contribute. How strange is it that the circumstances that knock you out are the circumstances necessary to, to get you back in? <laughs> it's a wild game. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, unfortunately, this year we've seen a lot of QBs be affected by by injury. So. Um, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a wild, wild league, and you never know what's going to happen. What, what, what kind of your message to Ryan? I get the teammates, and you guys are part of the final three games, playoffs, not an option. But what, when you preach to guys about finishing strong and, and playing for each other, yeah, got to play for, for each other. Got to play for yourself, or, or whatever the the motivation that gets you going is. You know, it's going to be different for for a lot of different guys. Um, but you have to find some reason to to go out there and, and bring passion, bring energy. Uh, obviously, our, our number one goal is uh, is not on the table at this point. But um, you know, want to go out there, find a reason to to bring passion into the game, and and go play to win. Right. What's that reason for you? Uh, right now, I'm playing for the teammates and uh, and for my family and for myself. You know, so um, that's that's what I lean on. Is there some personal sentimentality here with the three games left on on your contract and and obviously your team's future? And your future probably being different. Yeah, I just want to go out and, like I said earlier, just play good football. Uh, you know, I don't know, you know what that's going to look like here, in, you know, this week even, uh, if I do get the opportunity. But, you know, want to go out and, and play good football and find a way to win a game. Has it been difficult more being that asset that you talked about? Has there been temptation to not act that way? Just how difficult has it been handling that attitude? Yeah, it's a challenge, right? You know, you get your... Uh, your job taken basically, and uh, your your first instinct is is not a positive one. So, uh, yeah, it's been a, a growing opportunity for me to uh, put my own feelings aside and and try to, uh, like I said, be an asset to this team, continue to to work and um, you know be a positive impact on this team. What has kept you mentally strong throughout that time period? Uh, I think my faith and my family. Obviously, leaning on people that I, I love and um, feeling their support and. Um, just having, knowing that they have my back through through thick and thin, no, no matter what's really going on, you know, at work. Ryan, as you look through five years here, I mean, you've had some of the highest of highs, and obviously the last few weeks probably haven't been too great. How do you look at it in totality in terms of your time as a Titan? Yeah, it's tough to wrap it up at this point. You know, I think uh, when it's all said and done, I'll, I'll reflect a little more and, and try to wrap things up mentally a little bit. But, you know, at this point, I'm totally focused on, on doing what I can to get ready to go this week if necessary. I mean, it was great to get past that milestone that I've been stuck at for a couple of years. But like I said, it's just, just playing the game I love is just football. Do you think you're playing as well as you've ever played? Mm, I, mm, I wouldn't say that, but, you know, I, I, I got lucky. I'm, I, what about the sacks that I missed early on in the season? I mean, I don't know. When do you think you played better? Probably younger. <laughs> no. Younger Danico. Are you are you surprised at older Danico? No, no. Just doing what I go to practice and work on every day. I mean, no, I'm not surprised at all. Younger Danico didn't get an offer from the Colts, and you ended up here. You're in a similar situation. Do you ever think about like the contract? Just no, I don't think about this stuff. I let it work itself out. That's what I got an agent for. I just come and do my job. How badly do you want to stay with this team? Um, like I said, everything, I said, it's a good fit for me. I mean, I like it here. So, I mean, it's just it's what it is, man.
sorry I missed the first wave, but what do you tell some of the younger guys about playing for pride, playing for each other, even though you're eliminated for contention? What, 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 what do you tell the young guys going into games like the next three? Um, you know, you don't want to put bad film out there, so, you know, do what you do, do you do your job, and then the rest of the show for itself. From all the way back to OTAs to now, like, you can't just lay down, you know, and I know, like, you know, whatever, maybe for some people, you know, other teams or somewhere else, whether it's just, you know, being in the league for a long time, making a lot of money, you get kind of like jaded to the fact that you, you know, you're living out your dream. Like, I'm doing what I always love to do, so I, I'm not going to just let somebody beat up on me for 60 minutes just because I got eliminated from the playoffs. Like, I'm playing, you know, my childhood dream, so. Do you see most of the players in this locker room have that same attitude too? Yeah, you know, I think just like, it's just a mentality that I couldn't see somebody being comfortable with, like, just letting somebody beat their ass, you know, just because, you know, you're not going to make it to the playoffs. So, you know, all of us are playing for each other. I'm sure everybody has their own individual things as well. But, uh, no, yeah, like, nobody's about to just pack it up and go home. So. Is these playing at home to these final three maybe help as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you always love to be at home, have your home crowd, you know, everything like that. So, uh, last couple of games that we'll be, we'll be here at home. So, I like it. Is these given your story and how you grew up and how you came into this league? Is it maybe a little bit easier for you to have the motivation right now? Uh, yeah, it probably is. Um, but I would just, you know, challenge everybody. Like when they were kids, I'm sure they all had the motivation and the drive to want to be where they are right now. And if you told a 10 year old disease, hey, man, you're going to be playing in the NFL in week 15 or whatever. Nobody I wouldn't ask what the record was. I wouldn't ask you nothing. I just smile and say, hell, yeah, let's go. So. I mean, I expect everybody to do the same. This is a pretty young roster, and obviously everyone has different contract situations. How far can these three weeks go to helping guys ensure they're part of this next year and beyond? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like, the eye in the sky doesn't lie. You know, whatever you put on tape, that's your resume. So uh, I would just challenge you, like, if you have aspirations at all to last in this league, if your mentality is to let somebody just whoop up on you, then you're probably not going to last very long. So off the table. What's that answer for you? Um, I think it's uh, trying to be part of the solution and not part of the problem moving forward, um, no matter where this team goes. And uh, obviously, we're going to fight to win and we're going to fight to improve. And um, there's a lot of individuality in that and uh, just trying to improve on an individual level. But then as a team, like I said, trying to be part of the solution and put on tape what you can and prove that to this team that you're valuable to it. And uh, moving forward, that uh, that in order to win, that they'll need you to do it. So. This O line's really young. You. How, mm -hmm. how much can these last three games go towards helping all of you grow up and maybe mesh together heading into this? Uh, yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's three opportunities to continue to prove that we can do that, um, continue to prove that we can take in coaching and uh, continue to improve uh, on showing that we can improve uh, and be better than what we have put on tape. So. Thanks, Tom.